If it's not troubling you too much. Not at all. I had only just sat down. Oh, I'm sorry, Etty. I suppose there's no mad rush. Oh, actually, I was under that impression. But, of course, if you're revived in slavery... I said I was sorry, but I've just been looking at that lazy lot in there and that always teams me up. Say no more. I know exactly what you mean. Honestly, if an undertaker walked in there right now, he'd think he'd struck oil. <laughs> Let's hope one does. We might get a package deal for the lot. Yes, and Osbert and Alf have been out there so long sitting down, I reckon they've taken root. I'm going to get behind a pair of them before they're much older. Oh, well, of course, Alf's your own affair, mate, but I don't know what you can do about Osbert. I mean, he is a paying guest. Guest, yes. Paying, not for three weeks. Oh, no. Oh, poor little love. I suspect one of his horses let him down. Horses? Horses and cards. That's all he knows. Oh, no, I wouldn't say that. They tell me he's marvellous at snooker. Now, he'd better watch himself or I shall be snookering him. Oh, oh good morning, Pastor. Good morning, Mrs. Larkins. This is registered. Ah. Will you sign, please? Yeah, right. Good day. Morning. I say, that's a funny way to address me, the landlady. Well, that's what you are, isn't it? Yes, well, I know, but I've got a name. Oh, registered. Who is it from? The Reverend R. Rigby Soames. Oh, must be one of Osbert's relations. Yes, but what's he writing to me for? Unless Osbert's been up to something. You're joking. Never. Straight up, I mean it. I reckon if it was a prize given for downright crafty work dodging layabouts, that prize would go to one man. Old Oz here. That's for sure. Oh, yeah, just the thing. I don't know. I wouldn't say that at all. Wouldn't you, Ellen? No, I wouldn't. There are other exponents of the noble art, you oh, know. Uh, well, he's got a point there, you know. I suppose, you know, if it came to a match, I reckon old Alfred there, he'd run him close. That's for sure. Run him close. Now, look, I don't wish to boast. But you will. But if you're looking for the inventor of column dodging, you are seated right next to him, mate. <laughs> now, I have been married now to Ada for, what, 30 years. And I brought column dodging down to a fine art. But, well, I am, and I had to, to survive. She has had me in that there kitchen, washing dishes, making rissoles, cleaning out things. But you don't fight it, mate. You just drop a plate or two, you... You get a spud stuck in the mincer, drop a soap in the soup, and bosh, you're redundant. <laughs> and if that don't work, may you have one of your bad backs. Oh, I, he does a very good bad back. Winter of 61, no, no, I tell a lie, 62, two ton of coke to be shifted by hand. That was the start of my bad back. That's when you got it. That was when I invented it. <laughs> two weeks in bed, three doctors. Method acting, mate, I was magnificent. Do you know what? I was so good, I still get some of the twinges. Yeah. <laughs> Every time anybody mentions work? Exactly. It's better than a Geiger counter. Uh, yes, of course. My method is... Your slightly. method, mate. You're just an amateur. If you don't mind my saying so, you're a mere butterfly. Is that so? Yes. Let me inform you that I received my basic training at the war office. One of two hours, <laughs> finest bunch of layabouts in the world. Oh, Thank yeah. you, Lofty. Yes, that was a baptism of fire, all right, if you like. Main object there of the drill was always to keep moving and always to carry a folder. In other words, always appear madly busy, whereas in actual fact you were doing sweet Fanny Adams. I flattered myself I became a past master. Yeah. <laughs> I rest on my laurels. Do you? Well, you better get off and fast, for Zayda's on the warpath, mate, for your rent. The <laughs> rent? Oh. Well, if any of you could, gentlemen could do... Oh, well, I've got to go now. Well, 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 Henry! Henry, come on! Bye-bye, bye-bye, then. Good hour. See you. Bye-bye. So much for hero worship. Oh, that was very clever, that was. Not one of them played for their tea. <clears throat> Alfred, old friend. Don't you look at me. As a matter of fact, I'd rather not. Ah, oh, hit him, my angel. Sorry, Duck, I'm skinned. Ada wants you in the living room. How is Ada? In an ugly mood. Oh, in that case, we'd better not keep Ada waiting. <laughs> Come in. Ah, Ada, my flower. We don't want none of that botanical flannel. Sit down. Uh, I'd really rather Sit not... down. Yes, of course. <laughs> Funny you should send for me like this. I was just on the point of coming to see you about my rent. 
Was you? Yes, I'm expecting a letter, a registered letter. That wouldn't be from the Reverend R. Rigby Soames, uh, My it? cousin Rodney, yes, that'll be the one. Uh, aha! It's arrived, hasn't it? Yes, it has. Oh, jolly good. <laughs> and all our troubles are over. If you just... Your troubles are only just beginning. That letter was addressed to me. To you? But why should Rodney address it to you? So I opened it up and look what I found. Five tenths. Twenty quid. Oh, jolly Rodney. <laughs> I wonder why he addressed it to you by mistake. Wasn't no mistake. Listen. Dear Madam, payment of rent, which I understand is owed to you by my cousin Osbert. You don't owe me twenty quid, nothing like. Oh, no, 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 of course not. He, uh, he gets a bit muddled, you know. He's got a heart of gold, but he's inclined to be a little bit on the... Uh, so if you'll just deduct the rent and let me have the rest... Hands off. And listen. I did not send this money to Osbert as I want to make sure that you receive it. Ah, that's nice. Gets nicer. I regret to say that my cousin is a spendthrift, a drinker, a gambler and an idle, good-for-nothing waster who has brought me much pain. Oh, wait till I see him. I'll bring him pain, all right. Give him a swift kick up the cassock. <laughs> Quiet and listen to the rest. I wish it to be known that I pay Osbert's debts, but I pay them under protest. The alternative being too hideous even to contemplate. Now, what do you think he meant by that? Well, who knows? He always was a bit batty. <laughs> Used to refer to him as Raving Rodney. <laughs> I suppose it wouldn't have anything to do with this letter. <laughs> the ecclesiastical Tinker, he never sent you that letter. My dear old Rev Rod. Oh, blast. Broke again, and unless I pay arrears of rent, I shall be thrown out of my digs. Landlady hounds me incessantly. <laughs> Twenty quid should cover it. If not, I shall have to come down and move in with you. No, you won't fail me, love Osbert. And that is the alternative to idiots to contemplate. Rather than have you move in with him, he pays up. They always do. They? You mean you've done this before? Well, I have a very large family, Ada, you see. One must live. And However, I'm crossing Rodney off the list this time. Rather than have you live with them, they all pay up. Oh, try and see my point, Ada. I mean, suppose one of them decided to have me. I loathe the sight of them. You know what I ought to do with you, don't you? Something quick and painless. I ought to make this wicked letter come true. I ought to throw you out, bag and baggage. Oh, now, Ada, you do have the rent. Rent, this isn't. Rent, it's blood money. And you are going to send it straight back to your cousin, Rodney. Oh, shock would kill him stone dead. How's <laughs> Bert Rigby Soames? Your life is worthless. But that is all over. From now on, you're going to change. You are going to go out and you are going to get yourself a job. A job? You mean work? Yes, Osbert, I mean work. I am giving you an ultimatum. Either you go out and get yourself a job or I wash my hands of you. I throw you out bag and baggage. Do I make myself clear? Uh, I, I think I'll go to my room. You do that. And take the weekly advertiser with you. Don't choose to anything too difficult to start with. <laughs> yes? No, no, Dear. No, no. Here you are, Oz. Here's one. It's a nice one. They are. Day watchman wanted for nightlight factory. I oh, know. Previous experiences have said... Here, what about this one? It says here, company director wanted for thriving concern no previous qualifications necessary, 5,000 quid essential. <laughs> we had you go in then, I thought, did we? Never mind, son. We'll get you fixed up. We'll have you in line with your little dinner pail in your hand. I suppose you think that's funny. Oh, don't be like that, Toz. I mean, it's happened to better fellas than you. You've got to face it, mate. You've been rumbled. And when Ada says conform, you conform. I am not conforming. I am departing. You what? Here, now, now, here. Now, don't be silly now. You'd never leave here, not in a million years. No? Well, in any case, where would you go? I could move in with Cousin Rodney. By Jiminy, that would shatter his sermon. Now, I can't see you fitting into a vicarage. That's the ghastly part of the house. Neither can I. No. Still, I'll find somewhere. Uh, not like here, you won't. 
Beautiful, clean, tidy room, ridiculous rent, all the amenities, four square meals a day, and, and, and second helpings. I don't care. She's not going to make me get a job. No, you walk out that door, mate, you'll starve. So be it. Death before dishonor. Do you know what we got for supper? No. One of Ada's specialities, steak and kidney pud. Now, you know Ada's steak and kidney pud. Yeah. Lashings of that luscious meat, all covered with that dark brown gravy. And them little <laughs> new potatoes. <laughs> and those gorgeous sprouts. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, son. I was forgetting. Of course, you never had no tea, did you? No. no you was too raw up. An emperor. Oh, was girl. Golden sultana pudding. Smothered in syrup. Yes, well, I'll leave you to your packing hand. Don't you worry about the job, Oz. You'll get yourself fixed up a clever fella like you. <laughs> oh. Mirror, mirror, on the wall. Now who is the craftiest one of all? <laughs> oh, hard luck, Oz. You just can't win, can you? That's another seven years old. And the cost of a mirror up your shirt. See you downstairs for supper. We all for rice. Oi! Hey, want some needles? <laughs> You've been wool gathering that long. I thought you was doing some knitting. Oh, I'm sorry. I was thinking about us, but oh dear, I wonder if he's all right. Oh, wait, he, for heaven's sake, he's only looking for a job. He's not climbing the North Pole. <laughs> Poor little devil, I do think you're rotten. He's been out all day. Do you suppose he's found something? I sincerely hope so. I told him not to come home until he had. Oh, <laughs> you are. Rotten. He might not be back for days, if ever. You'll be sorry when he's found outside the Labour Exchange with his insurance card clutched in his poor little frozen hand. Now, oh, Eddie, for heaven's sake. Well, I think that's the nut. You're rotten all through, you are. Rotten. Sending him out to work. He won't know where to start looking. Retired army officer has never done a stroke in his life. Well, it's our time he started. <laughs> you seem to forget that with one exception, that lot in there have got jobs. <laughs> Some great big joke, aren't it? Yes, and I know what it is too, the rotten lot. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear, fool. <laughs> you know, I never thought I'd live to see it. No, 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 shut up, man, shut up. No, it's not right to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> it just goes to show you, in the midst of life, you'll be a dead joke. It's a private joke, or can we all join you? Yeah, lift up your cup, man. <laughs> Oh, it's all go today. Oh, my back's playing me up. You want to try putting it into something like work, for <laughs> Yes. <laughs> what? what are you sniggering at? Oh, nothing, ma'am. I'm just... Oh, 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 And poor Oz better cup of tea. I better could use one. Well, dear, how did it go? Uh, oh, you mean the, the job hunting? Oh, what else? Did you have any luck? Yes. He didn't find me. Oh, <laughs> Don't you mind them, you tell me all about it. Well, I, I tried the jobs in the newspapers, but they all needed qualifications, so I, I thought about it a little while, and I came up with the right answer. Go into business for yourself, Osbert, I said, so that's what I've done. You haven't. Of course, he hasn't. Where's your capital? Here? Quiet, where's your capital? Right here. My card. As displayed prominently everywhere. By the way, uh, do you mind? No, of course not. Oz, Jobs, Inc. What's the ink? Ordinary blue black. Oh, <laughs> 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 to give it a flourish. Minders, keepers, takers of infinite care. Well, what does minders, keepers mean? Well, minding things, keeping things for people, anything, for anybody, as long as it's unskilled, and I already have my first assignment. 
You never have. I have. Working, and I owe it all to you, Ada. Oh, I'm glad. Oh, yes. This is the life. Out there on the great uncharted seas of commerce, steering one's own little ship of enterprise. For the first time in my life, I feel clean. You're making a lot out of a spot of caretaking, ain't you? Quiet. What's your first job, dear? Well, there's a little chap who wants me to look after some clocks for him. You know, keep them wound up, oiled, keep them in running order. <laughs> <laughs> He's a flipping clock minder. I'd rather have a clock minder than a clock watcher. <laughs> of course, it's only a small beginning. Oh, but it's a spirit that counts, us. But I'm so proud of you. Oh, thank you. One does need the encouragement. You have got me behind you, Oz, 100%. I am so glad. Yeah, well, you'd better get started then, Joe, otherwise all them clocks are going to start running down. Uh, yes, of course. With your permission. And with my blessing, I'll bear it. Right, old chap, is this way? <laughs> <laughs> Husband, dear, no! No! But why, Ada? Why? Because we couldn't do nothing else, that's why. I didn't know he was going to bring them all here, but it won't be for long. For long? How long? Just until Osbert finds a warehouse. A warehouse? He couldn't find a wash house. <laughs> Shut up, you wooden bullet! Oh, it drives you mad, doesn't it, here? And it's another thing. Why do they all have to be down here? He hasn't got any up in his room, has he? No. No. He said it was something to do with the altitude. Altitude? Besides, there's no room in his room. It's full of books. Books? That's something else he's minding. It seems to me it's him that needs minding. No, Alf, don't disturb him. He's working. Yes, he's working his loop. That's what he's doing. Well, we'll just go up and see him. You're wasting your time. No. Stroop, I thought you had a machine gun in here. Uh, hello, Alfred. God, blimey, are you on the level? Are you really working? Yes, I am really working. I have to uh, compile a list of all these books <laughs> in my spare time. Heaven knows how long it's going to take. Still, one must keep the customers happy. <laughs> Beg pardon, did you want something? <laughs> yes, I did. Well, well, no, I don't. Not if you're working. Working? Alfred, old friend, it's marvellous. One feels one in doing something worthwhile. One belongs. One cannot describe it. It's work creeping all over one. Is that feeling of insanity? Try it. Try it. <laughs> Try it, Alf, and see for yourself. No, thanks all the same, son. I know I've left Ada downstairs in the sitting room all on her Todd. You understand, you know. Suit yourself. By the way, Alfred, I should be rather busy this evening. I wonder if you'd mind doing me a small favour. Small? Oh, well, yes. All right, Oz. Anything, mate. Wayne, the clocks. <laughs> oh, dear. Ah, oh, past three. Oh, my poor head. How? Help! Help! Where are you? Help! Oh. All right, I'm here. You're up early. Up early? I haven't been to bed. I've been winding and flipping clocks. Oh, Alf, you're doing a marvellous job. Yes, I think I must be nearly as balmy as he is. Shut up! Oh, dear, I haven't slept a wink. Well, how can anybody sleep with that racket going on? He hasn't stopped all night. I know. Alf, I think you'll have to tell him to stop. Tell him to... Don't you think I've tried? Oh. He's got his door locked. There's a little card on the door, and on the card it says, Do not disturb. Men at work. I think he's gone <laughs> work mad. Oh, I've wronged that man, Alf, I have. I do hope he's not working himself to death. 
Wait till the half hour. I'll have you. Oh, it's true. He's had kittens. Hello, I saw this over here. Sure. Hey, Lance. Hey, Doc. Hey, Doc. Hey, Doc. Hey, Doc. What has he got us minding for him now? Oh, Badger, six canaries, two linnets, three finches, a couple of lovebirds and a poly parrot. Come on, girl. Come on. Hey, I'll sit down here, girl. That's right. Here we are. Two more little castaways. What have you got there? Rabbits, are you out of your mind? Do you want to start an epidemic or what? Come on. Outside. How? Outside in the yard, rabbits. How? Outside. Open the door, How? please. Open the door. That's right. <laughs> Mind how you go in the shed, it's full of kittens. Hello, girl. Where have you been then? All over the house, trying to find somewhere to have a lie down. It's hopeless. There's something making a noise in every room. If only we hadn't put them birds upstairs. We? Me? How? Are you all right? Ah, uh, apart from fallen arches and housemaid's elbow and a touch of the clockwinder's twitch, I'm all right. Yeah. <laughs> you don't look too well yourself, you know. No, I'm not. How? Where is he now? Who was but? Hmm. He's out. He's gone out. He's trying to find something else for us to mind. No, Alf, he couldn't. What else is there? Uh, right, you gentlemen, in here, please. Uh, ah, you, in here, come. <laughs> hmm. Husband, what? What's all this in? Marvellous stroke of luck. Just picked up a bunch of tourists. Picked up? Where from? <laughs> uh, I don't know. China, I think. No, I spent... No, we've got no room. No, no, there's no room. No, oh, of course there is. They don't mind sharing, do you? Oh, don't understand a word. Marvellous. <laughs> <laughs> never mind it. Ada, never mind. Don't worry. Leave it all to me. Uh, follow me, gentlemen, please. Uh, Alfred, old friend. Honourable luggage? Yes. Yeah. All right. You all right? Um, yes, I'm all right. Well... Oh, yeah, they've sorted themselves out very nice. I don't know how, but they are clever, the Chinese. How, oh, Etty, get to the point. Oh, well, as so far as I can make out, there's four for bird's nest soup, three for chop suey, two for flied lice. Oh, I'm sorry, I'll read that again. For fried uh, rice. Then there's pork, sweet and sour, crispy noodles, and for some inscrutable reason, one of them wants fish and chips.
Big Ben. Ours is a parliament. Upstairs, along the passage, last door on the right. How? Yeah? Hold my hand. Hey, Anna. I must not weaken. I must be strong. Because the cause is noble. Hey, do you feeling all right? Yes, I am. But how much longer I can go on, I do not know. It needs just one thing, just one more thing. Uh, where do you think we could put 37 sacks of fertilizer? <laughs> that is it! Alfred, yeah. go into the kitchen, dear. I want to see Osbert alone. Yeah. Come here. They've been in here half hour. I know. What do you reckon she's doing to him? I don't know. I ain't heard no screaming. No, but then you wouldn't over all them rotten clocks, would you? I have done it. Heaven forgive me. It's over. Peter, where's Osbert? In there, what's left of him. What, what? <laughs> no, Alfred, don't go in there. A man is entitled to be alone with his grief. His grief? I couldn't stand him being good no longer. The flesh is weak, Alf. My flesh, not his. So I gave him back his 20 pounds. He is going to stop being a worker and he's going back to being a drone. <laughs> You'll have to get rid of all these things, Alf. I don't think he's quite up to it. Me? What? Oh, what, what oh, oh, no, not the Chinese. I have cast the die, Alf. You will have to cope. I'm going into the cave. Have a nice, quiet cup of tea. A cup, a cup, a cup of tea. Hetty, Hetty, all, all, all them birds and all, all the, all the, all them, all them. Chin up, Alfred. Remember, always keep moving and always carry a folder. Make sure all the stuff I borrowed gets back to the pet shop and the clock shop. Will you? <clears throat> Just mention my name. <laughs> just, 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 just m mention me. Oh, 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 he borrowed it. You don't mean to say the crafty devil. Crafty is right. Oh, we'll see how crafty he is when I show all this lot to Ada. Are you going to? No. No, it's not often you see a fella get away with sheer murder. Here. Let's see. Where do you reckon he borrowed them chinks from? Alfred! Oh, oh, come oh, no, I tell you, we don't know nothing about it. Nothing. No, for heaven's sake. That was the Chinese embassy. Yes. Do you know who all them Chinamen were? No. The Peking football team. Cosbert <laughs> <Cosford> kidnapped them. <laughs> you wait until I get my hands on it. 